A very good day. We are gathering virtually to mark and celebrate the Wednesday after Easter. Um, this is uh, a rich time for us as, as Christians as we celebrate the resurrection. And it is something that we are going to continue doing for the next eight weeks. Um, so it is, it is good to, to gather, to pray, to worship, to, to be with God through this time. We begin with our resurrection trajectory responses. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He gave us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Rejoice then, even in your distress. We shall be, we shall be counted worthy when Christ appears. God has claimed us as his own. He called us from our darkness into the light of his day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us worship. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us worship. We continue with a portion of the 105th Psalm. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant, the promise he made for a thousand generations the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath that he swore to Isaac. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, at three o'clock in the afternoon. And a man came, uh, lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the, at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive from, something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk. And he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God. And they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk alone? They stood, they stood still looking sad. 
Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. And as they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost evening and the day is nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was walk talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and he's appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. You know, this morning I... I woke up knowing that I was uh, going to be recording the service today. And to be honest with you, I was overwhelmed by the disappointment of being back in this situation, recording instead of celebrating with at least some parishioners. It was overwhelming. It actually took me by surprise. I didn't feel it all weekend. You know, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Vigil, Easter Sunday. And I think that's probably just because those services, and, and it was, I was sort of busy getting ready for those services, and they, those services have a rhythm and they, they sort of carry you along. But after yesterday's sort of quiet day, it, it felt heavy this morning getting up. I was filled with disappointment, sadness, even almost a, a, a melancholy. And that ain't the way to, to be celebrating Easter. That's not the way it's supposed to be. Um, this should be a time of, of joy and hope and all the rest. But that's how I came to this time, to this moment. And my suspicion is that there's a lot of us in this boat. Maybe not under exactly the same circumstances as me, but a lot of us are worn out by the back and forth, the up and down, the up. A lot of us are, are sad because we've, we've missed out on celebrating Easter properly. A lot of us are, are disappointed. A lot of us are struggling. It is, it is touching our lives for sure. I suspect that sadness and disappointment were probably at the core of those two disciples that were walking along the road to Emmaus. They were one of the, it was one of the situations, I suspect, where they were together, but they were together in their misery. They were together in their, in their sadness. They were together, and so they probably were just feeding off of each other. 
And it wasn't just that they were experiencing that as individuals, but they were building one another's sadness and disappointment up. And then, of course, a third person joined their, their walking group. And they were asked what it was that they were talking about. And they said, well, you're the only person that doesn't know Jesus was, was killed. And Jesus, even though they didn't know it was him, spoke and said, you guys are not the brightest bulbs in the box. You should have seen this coming. It's in the scriptures. And then he starts to, to sort of lay that out for them. They walk along to hear what he has to say, and, and it begins to shift them. It begins to, to shift their way, their life, their, their everything. They arrive at their destination, and Jesus looks like he's going to go on. They say, no, 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 wait, wait, stay with us. So he goes in, breaks the bread, and suddenly they realize who it is. Everything moved for them. Everything changed for them in that moment. They walked with Christ, and it lifted them up. It gave them hope, it gave them peace, it gave them joy. They were disappointed, sad, distraught, whatever. They were really struggling. And Jesus walked with them, and that changed absolutely everything. That has sort of been my experience today. These particular readings spoke to me in a time of, of sadness, in a time of, of disappointment, in a, in a time of, of melan melancholy. They spoke to me and reminded me that we don't walk alone. That we are not stuck in this mess. That there is hope. This is not the end. This is, is not where it all collapses. Not even death could stop Jesus from coming back. He is alive and he walks with us. So there's hope, there's peace, there's joy to be had. These readings spoke to me while I was walking along sad. And they reminded me of Jesus walking with me. We're not in this alone. We have one another. We have family and friends. And we have Christ. Christ is alive. And so he can walk with us. And he can remind us that this ain't the end. Jesus is alive. And that means we have good news. The pandemic will not go on forever. Lockdowns, shutdowns, white zones, whatever they're called, will not go on forever. Not even death goes on forever. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. And he is walking with us. And for that we can say, thanks be to God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first in the great commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbors yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray. Let us pray for the church, for Todd, our bishop, for our brothers and sisters throughout the world, for our brothers and sisters in our St. Mark's family. Let us pray that God would watch over all of us, that God would walk with us, and that God would fill us with joy and hope and peace. Let us pray for the leaders of the nations. Let us pray that in their decisions, in their policies, in their actions, they would always 
love their neighbors. They would always strive for what is good for the whole world. That they would always lift up those who are vulnerable or in need. Let us pray for our world, for an end to war, violence, hatred, bigotry, discrimination, for an end to poverty, the suffering caused by a natural disaster, for an end to this pandemic. Let us pray that everyone in the world would be able to live and live abundantly, that they would know the good news, that they would recognize Christ walking with them. Let us pray for our community, for St. Clair Beach, and Tecumseh, for Windsor, and all of Essex County. Let us pray for all our neighbors, that we would all be able to live together in love and in peace, that we, that we would support each other and care for one another, that we would make one another stronger through our grace and help. Let us pray for those who are in need of our prayers, for the sick, the suffering, the lonely, the depressed, the mentally ill, and the addicted. Let us pray for all those who are on our hearts at this time. Let us pray that Christ's healing presence with them would lift them up and heal them and restore them to the fullness of health and well-being. Let us pray for those who have died. We remember especially the Reverend Canon Sue Paul. Let us pray too for all those who mourn. The good news of Christ's resurrection would fill them with comfort, peace, and hope. Finally, let us pray for ourselves. Let us pray that as Christ walks with us and fills us with grace, we would share that grace by walking with others, by loving others, by caring for, for others. We pray all of this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord of life and power, through the mighty resurrection of your Son, you have overcome the old order of sin and death and have made all things new in him. May we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, reign with him in glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit is alive, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace and believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And just before we, we close, I want to thank you for your prayers, for your support, for your goodness and kindness and love. I want to also remind you that it is Easter, and it will be for weeks. So I hope that you will feast well, that you will celebrate well, that you will recognize and be open to the joy and the hope and the peace of this season. Please stay home when you can. Please stay safe when you go out. And please stay in touch with each other. It's one of those ways we can share Christ's presence with one another. We need that presence, for sure. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen.